Okay, upon request, let's get started here with chapter three, 3.1, fundamental identities. Just a quick review here. We got our sine of theta is one over cosecant theta. Cosine theta is one over secant theta. Cotangent theta is one over cotangent theta. Those are our three main ones. Then we take the reciprocals of those. Then cosecant theta will be one over sine theta. Cosecant theta or secant theta will then be the reciprocal of 1 over cosine theta and cotangent theta will equal 1 over tangent theta. So if you notice, if you remember the first three, you just interchange the two trig functions. Quotient identity, tangent theta, sine theta over cosine theta, cotangent theta, flip it, cosine theta over sine theta. <clears throat> Your main Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Now remember, how do we find the other two? To change sine squared to tangent squared, you divide everybody by cosine squared. So sine squared theta over cosine squared theta is tangent squared theta. Cosine squared theta divided by itself, cosine squared theta is 1. 1 divided by cosine squared theta will be secant squared theta. To find the identity with cotangent and cosecant in it, now you divide everybody by sine squared theta in the original. Sine squared theta divided by itself is 1. Cosine squared theta divided by sine squared theta is cotangent squared theta. And 1 divided by sine squared theta is secant squared theta. Our even and odd identities. Sine of a negative theta is equal to negative sine theta. <coughs> Excuse me for the cough. Secant of negative theta is going to be negative cosecant theta, which is its reciprocal of sine, so that should be true. Cosine of negative theta is cosine theta, and so should be true about its reciprocal. Secant of negative theta should be secant theta. Tangent of negative theta is negative tangent theta, so its reciprocal cotangent of negative theta must also be negative cotangent theta. All right, the ones with the negatives are odd functions, and the ones where the signs change back to where it is is an even function. So cosine and secant are only even identities. The other two are odd identities. Also remember, odd identities are symmetrical to the origin, which means if you turn the paper 180 degrees, the graph still looks the same. And the even ones flip over the y-axis. We may be taking and using alternate forms of your Pythagorean identities or other identities, if you will. So remember, your sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. You could also subtract over the sine squared theta to the 1 and create this identity. You could also subtract over the cosine squared. All those are possible, so please keep those in mind. Oh, let's see, i got to make my cursor a little bigger here so you can see it better. There we go. All right, choose the expression to complete each fundamental identity. <clears throat> so using those previous ones we had on the last page right here. Okay, so sine squared x plus cosine squared x, that's 1. Secant squared x minus 1, that's tangent squared x, just an alternate form of what you saw on the previous page. Here's our odd and even identity with the negative x, negative sine of x. 1 equals, you can have any of the three forms of the Pythagorean identity. 1 minus sine squared x, here we go, we're alternating this one here, we're subtracting over the sine squared x to the 1, so that makes it cosine squared x. <coughs> Tangent of x is equal to 1 over. That means it's activating the reciprocal, so we're going cotangent x. You see sine of x in the numerator? That's your difference quotient, sine of x over cosine of x. Even and odd, secant is even with cosine, so that's just secant of x. Sine of x is equal to tangent of x. Wait a minute, tangent of x is right here. Sine x over cosine x. So if I multiplied it by a cosine x, 
I'll cancel the cosines and we'll get sine. 1 minus cosecant squared x. Again, that's our Pythagorean identity. Going up to this one. <coughs> Subtracting over the cosecant squared of x. We'll have negative cotangent squared x. And 1 equals, different from when we had 4 here, this would be match up any reciprocals. Secant x times cosine x. Cosecant x times sine x, tangent x times cotangent x, those would all work. <coughs> Again, pardon me for the coughing. Y'all know I'm getting over the flu here. All right, using our identities to simplify the statement, the best thing you want to do here is think about converting this into sines and cosines. Cosecant theta is 1 over sine theta. Cotangent theta is cosine theta over sine theta. We don't divide by fractions. We technically multiply by the reciprocal of that second fraction. So I'm going to change it to 1 over sine theta times sine theta. The sine theta is cancel. 1 over cosine becomes secant theta. Sine squared theta plus cotangent. Uh, tangent squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Here is a case where you don't have to convert sine squared, uh, squared theta into sine squared theta over cosine squared. You have sine squared theta and cosine squared theta being added together. We'll just group them together and we'll call that a 1. And 1 plus tangent squared theta, go back to your Pythagorean list, that's equal to secant squared theta. So there's always going to be something there. Just keep looking at that list of identities. All right, use the identities to find the following. Sine of theta is equal to a negative 0 0.25245. 2, find sine of negative theta. Well, we know negative theta for sine is negative sine theta. We're going to substitute in the negative 0 0.245 in for sine theta. That means we're going to have a double negative, which turns that into a positive. Part B, <coughs> cosecant theta is what we're looking for. That's 1 over sine theta, which means we're going to put the negative 0.245 into the denominator. <coughs> and they're usually going to want an exact value here, so we'll enter it into your calculator and tell it to turn it into a fraction. And we get negative 200 over 49. Remember, this command is math first option. If cosine theta is 0.7885, find cosine of negative theta. So remember, that's the even identity. So this isn't going to change your decimal value. It's still positive. Secant of negative theta is still secant theta. And that secant theta is 1 over cosine theta. So we'll put the 0.7885 into the denominator. And just like part B, we'll go to the calculator, enter it, and tell it to return it as a fraction. And we get 2,000 over 1,005. Come back here, 1,577. Example 3, find f of negative x to determine whether the function is even or odd. So here's our rules. Oh, slow down, mouse. Mouse. If f of negative x is equal to f of x, it's an original even function, just like cosine and secant. But if the negative inside the function comes out in front of the function, then it's an odd. So for part A, you're going to put negative x here, here, and here in all three spots. Now we're going to simplify. Well, cosine of negative x is still plain cosine of x. All right, so the negative on this x doesn't disappear. It goes to the front. And now cosine of x over x, this part right here is your original f of x. So this equals negative f of x, so we're looking at an odd function. Part b, we're going to do the same thing. Put negative x here, negative x for this factor, negative x in for sine, negative x in for cosine. So let's simplify. Negative x, no change. Sine of negative x becomes negative sine of x. Cosine of negative x becomes cosine x. These two negatives multiply together to become a positive, and lo and behold, hey, wait a minute, we're right back to where we started. Therefore, we are an even function. 
Example four, finding trig function values given one value and the quadrant. We're going to want to use our identities here. So if tangent theta is equal to negative 5 thirds and theta is in quadrant 2, find each function value. <coughs> We're looking for secant theta and sine theta. So we're in quadrant two. So, yep, that makes tangent negative. Secant is part of cosine, so that's going to be a negative answer. <coughs> so I'm going to go put negative in my answer right away. And I'm going to use my Pythagorean identity with tangent and secant in it. So 1 plus tangent squared x equals secant squared x. Or if you want to put thetas instead of x's, that's fine. So we'll have 1 plus a negative 5 thirds squared equal to secant squared theta. But we know that if you're going to square a negative, it's going to be positive. So just leave it positive. That's going to give us 25 ninths. My 1, I'm changing that to 9 over 9. So I can add these two fractions together with common denominators. That will give me 34 over 9. We'll take the square root of both sides. And we get, well, I can take the square root of 9 on the bottom, which will be 3, but I can't take the square root of 34. So my answer for secant theta is a negative square root of 34 over 3. Sine of theta, using the identity, I'm going to go to my tangent and say, hey, wait a minute. Tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. So to isolate sine theta, we'll multiply cosine theta over with the tangent theta. Those cancel. Now, I have tangent theta, it's negative 5 thirds, and I have cosine theta because it's the reciprocal of secant theta. So we'll flip this, put that in as negative 3 over the square root of 34. Tangent is negative 5 thirds. Okay, we'll cancel the signs. They'll be positive. The threes will cancel. So sine theta is 5 over the square root of 34. <coughs> we'll rationalize that. Multiply square root of 34 top and bottom. We get 5 square root of 34 over 34. So again, caution to avoid a common error when taking the square root. Be sure to choose a sign based on the quadrant of theta and the function being evaluated. All right, so again, always remember, if you're going to use the Pythagorean identities, it's a good idea to use your all students take calculus and identify the sign of your answer before you get started. Example 5, rewrite each expression in terms of sine theta, cosine theta, and then simplify the expression so that no quotient appears. You're going to see these directions all the time. <coughs> Excuse me. So tangent theta, that's sine theta over cosine theta. Hey, cosine theta is cancel. We're equal to sine theta. That one's done. Over here, you could convert to sines and cosines, but this would make it a little messy. And I recognize as soon as I see squareds on trigs, I'm thinking Pythagorean identity. And 1 plus tangent squared theta, that's a secant squared theta. So now convert to sines and cosines. So cotangent squared is cotangent, or excuse me, cosine squared theta over sine squared theta <coughs> times 1 over cosine squared theta. The cosine squareds cancel, leaves me 1 over sine squared theta, which is cosecant squared theta. <coughs> Part C, again, 1s and trig functions squared. Thinking Pythagorean theorems here. 1 plus cotangent squared theta. Looking at your list, that is cosecant squared theta. 1 minus cosecant squared theta. I think we saw that in the list of examples. That's negative cotangent squared theta. We'll change it to sines and cosines. 1 over sine squared theta is all over negative cosine squared theta sine squared theta. Well, you can either cancel the sine squared thetas in the denominator like we can normally do, or you can multiply by the reciprocal. We now have 1 over negative cosine squared theta, which is the reciprocal identity for secant squared theta. And we keep the negative sign. D, probably smart here to convert these two into sines and cosines because you already have them in this binomial and we're going to have to foil this together. So if we do that, you might see the cancellation happening while you multiply. 
So cosecant theta, 1 over sine theta, secant theta, 1 over cosine theta. All right, so here goes the multiplication. Sine theta times 1 over sine theta. That's basically it's reciprocal. That's a 1. Sine theta over cosine theta, multiplying it to the top one, sine over cosine, that's going to be tangent theta when we simplify that. Or you can simplify it right now. Minus cosine theta times 1 over sine theta, that's going to be a minus cotangent theta when we simplify it. And you can simplify it now or write it out and simplify it later. And negative cosine theta times 1 over cosine theta, that's going to change to a negative 1. The 1 and negative 1 cancel. Like we said, we'll get tangent theta minus cotangent theta. Again, I cannot overemphasize this enough. You will notice <clears throat> in my grading from now on, you have to put an argument with sines, cosines, and tangents. You cannot leave the theta off or capital A or capital B or X, whatever we're using, you have to write an argument there. And I notice some of you are still doing that. And I'm going to keep dinging you points until you learn your lesson. It is important to put down the argument value with the trig function. 